every year without fail, there seems to be this expectation of like a revolutionary change in design. And even though the iPhone looks largely the same, I would argue that this year's iPhone is the most exciting in years for photographers and filmmakers. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis Chavez. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of Southern California. In this week's video, I wanna talk about the iPhone 15 Pro. So it's not so much a review, but more like my experience of shooting it for the last month. So starting off with the design, and I know the iPhone doesn't really change design-wise year after year, but they changed the materials to titanium from stainless steel. I think it's a welcome change, especially because it makes everything look, feel more like a tool and less like a luxury product. So even if I'm using this phone to take pictures without a case or something, it's a lot easier to hold, a lot more comfortable to hold, and I don't feel like it feels like as fragile, even though there's reports that the iPhone uh, 15 Pro in titanium is a lot more fragile than the previous models. I just feel like the change in materials just make everything a lot more comfortable and something that I'm more excited to use on a daily basis. The debate over whether or not Apple should use more colors in their Pro line has been debated a lot over the last couple of weeks. I really like the titanium look in this, the natural titanium in this iPhone. And I think it makes everything look really clean and what makes me um, drawn to other cameras as well. So yeah, I really like the change in the titanium look for the iPhone this year. The one change in design that Apple has been advertising the most is the action button. And although I use it quite a bit, I tend to forget that it's there all the time. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, but if you like to customize your phone a little bit, I think it's a, a welcome change. And if you're programming it to like the camera app or something, it's super, super fast to launch. So, you know, you can take a picture right away. But if um, like me, you've never used any other types of customizable buttons because I've always been an iPhone user. It takes a little bit of getting used to, especially because these uh, buttons are pretty close together. I would have preferred that it would be on the other side because uh, it seems more natural to me because it's close to the cameras. I know they, you know, there's different ways that Apple could have implemented this, but I do like the change overall. And um, if you are upgrading your, to this new iPhone because of the action button, I wouldn't really it's not like a feature I would say that is worth it, but it is a nice addition to have on the phone. As a photographer, the thing that interests me the most of the new iPhones is the change in the camera. So I'm coming from the iPhone 13 Pro to the 15 Pro, and the change in the pictures I'm getting is like night and day. I feel like the pictures are noticeably sharper because of the megapixel bump from the 13 Pro. And so even pictures that I use for like my personal stuff or the things I post online, they're noticeably nicer. The files, they have a little bit more latitude for me to be able to play around with the colors and the crop. So for instance, I took a trip to the East Coast recently and a lot of my favorite pictures were taken on my phone, which normally I wouldn't do. Like whenever I upgrade a phone, I tend to like shoot it for like a week or two and then I kind of forget about it and just use my regular cameras. So I find myself using the iPhone a lot more than I thought I would. And it's something that I really like about these new iPhones it actually makes me inspired to shoot with them instead of just my regular cameras. I feel like I need to bring around a big camera for me to get pictures that I'm excited about. So even though I stick to 28 millimeters usually on most of my cameras and even the iPhone. I find that the telephoto lens is a lot better this year, especially coming from the iPhone 13 Pro. I've been taking a lot more pictures with that camera and it's been nice because I've been able to challenge myself to find new compositions. And for the first time, I feel like compelled to shoot on this lens. And so if you want to try to challenge yourself to compose in different ways. I think definitely makes it a lot easier this year to be able to actually shoot in different modes. So by adding a lot of these features, I think Apple is going in the right direction and building in features that are actually helpful for photographers. One thing that I would love for Apple to implement is actually like a manual mode and in, in camera. Like, I don't know what they call the iPhone Pro, Pro if they don't kind of unlock that feature for photographers. So if they want to have full control over their exposure, they should be able to do so without having to go to a third party app. 
there's tons of third-party apps that are they do the job but i would love for it to be right built into the ios so i hope apple actually works on this in building that into the app because it will be super helpful for a lot of photographers so the camera app got a couple of new features and my favorite one out of all of them is the ability to crop into the sensor for different focal lengths. I know Apple made a big deal about having like six or 10 or however many lenses on the phone, which aren't necessarily true. But if you like to compose for certain focal lengths, it's really nice to be able to do it in camera. So whenever I launch the camera app on my phone, it's already set to 28 millimeters. So if you're familiar with my channel at all, you know that my favorite focal length is a 28 millimeter focal length. So I love to compose that way. So knowing that I can do it right from the app is really nice. So it not only is it 28 millimeters, but you can also do 35 millimeters and 24 millimeters or use the other settings in the camera. So as someone who really likes to have that convenience of just launching an app and being able to compose that way, it's super, super helpful. Low light performance seems to be very similar to last year's iPhone and the previous year. So it's not something I have tons of experience with. And so this year, Apple made a point to note that they put different lens coding. So a lot of photographers, myself included, were hoping that it would help out those reflections you get in certain scenarios, especially at night a lot. But uh, sadly, you still get tons of those artifacts that uh, iPhones get even with the newer coding. So hopefully in the future, they address that because Nighttime is not something that I do a lot with the iPhone specifically for that reason. One thing that really surprised me about the iPhone this year was the addition of log shooting in camera. So if you are someone who shoots a lot with uh, a lot of video cameras, the addition of log is really useful because that means that you can actually use your iPhone to match your other cameras because you have more control over your colors. You can sharpen your your um, your footage. So not the colors aren't baked in, so you get a lot more flexibility in post. So iPhones have really beautiful video and so it's something that I will stick to. I will just stick to regular video shooting but if I'm shooting a YouTube video or something for a client and I need to get a really quick sh shot here and there it's really useful to have and it's something that I didn't expect from Apple this year but it's a very welcome addition to this year's iPhone. For instance if you're shooting like a busy scene on the iPhone you will see that it tries to overcompensate and oftentimes over sharpens footage but if you shoot it in log you get more control over that so you can really dial up your colors and if you want to sharpen the footage a little bit you can because it, the digital sharpness is not baked in right into your footage the only drawback of shooting log on the phone is the fact that the file sizes are so huge so you can use external accessories uh, the one that i found is this one from anchor that i've been using and i have a a 256 gig gigabyte micro SD card and I find that it gets the job done. I don't shoot a lot of 4K 60, so I don't, I haven't seen um, a lot of drop frames or any issues like that shooting with this. I would test out different accessories for your use cases, but I primarily use this on 4K 24 and I find that it's fast enough for the type of shooting that I'm doing. The only hiccup is like, if you wanna shoot start and stop clips, you have to give it a second for it to be able to read, um, write the file onto the SD card and for you to start a new clip. But other than that, it's been pretty seamless for me to be able to shoot log from the phone without using my internal storage. And all of the clips live on this little SD card and I can plug it into my computer and start editing if I wanna edit that into a video. One thing I didn't think it was gonna be as big of a deal as people made it was the addition of USB-C, but it's really changed the way that I interact with my phone because I can actually use a lot more accessories that are USB-C made specifically. Like I can plug in my phone right into a computer monitor if I wanna use it as a big monitor for stuff, which I didn't know you could do. I can also use it to, and more importantly, I can actually import my photos faster from my other cameras. In the past, I've used apps and you know, they did the job, they got the job done, but Using an app is a lot slower and clunkier. Even the good ones are slow. So having a way to just very quickly import pictures that I'm excited about from like a vacation or something is really useful. So I've been able to import pictures right from on vacation. I can put them right into my phone from my camera and edit them right from like my hotel room or something. So it's been super easy and very helpful to be able to use USB-C accessories with my phone. And I also plug in a USB, you can also plug in a hard drive right into your phone if you wanna shoot and log externally. You can do that from the phone. It's a little clunky right now because there's not a lot, any manufacturers who are making cases to be able to fit an SSD back there. But I think once case manufacturers start making these cases, it's gonna make it a lot easier for people to shoot 
a bunch of footage right from their phone, especially because Log and ProRes RAW on the iPhone have really huge files. So it's not something I'm gonna use all the time, but knowing that I can use a USB-C accessory like a hard drive, or an SD card is really helpful for me to be able to shoot more often. Speaking of accessories, MagSafe is not necessarily new this year. It's been around for a couple of generations already, but there's tons of companies that make MagSafe accessories specifically for photographers and videographers. The one I have here is from Peak Design and you know, it's this little tripod. And although I think it's really pricey, I find it to be super useful because it's a, this little tripod that goes right to the back of your phone via MagSafe. It keeps the whole um, phone relatively pretty small still, and you get a really nice tripod right from the bottom of your phone. So you can change it into different orientations. You can do it this way. You can also shoot uh, vertical or horizontal. So it's super useful to be able to do that this way. Uh, I know Moment also makes a ton of different accessories. They make cages and tripod mounts. So there's tons of things that you can use for your phone to be able to actually utilize the phone more and to be able to shoot more professional type of footage. Now with the addition of Log and ProRes, you know, it's been around for a little bit, but being able to use your phone as an access, not just as an accessory, but like a secondary or a third camera, it's really useful if you utilize different accessories. So besides the tripod or my USB-C card reader, the other USB-C accessory that I own is this um, battery charger that also just goes that back right in the back of your phone. So having magnetized accessories is really helpful because I can charge my phone this way. This, you know, this one has like a little kickstand if I want to use it that way. So for instance, if you're using uh, one of these MagSafe chargers, you can, you know, put it right in the back of the phone and you are still being able to shoot because you can shoot not just internally, but via uh, just like a card reader or something, you can do that right from it. So, you know, the, the battery life on new iPhones, it's pretty good. And with the addition of just being able to accessorize it, it makes it so much more useful. Since I'm shooting a lot more on my iPhone, there's a lot more people asking me how my settings on how I shoot with my phone. And these are some quick tips on how to get better footage and better photos right from your phone. So, you know, my editing process on my phone is not super complicated, but the thing that I do with my phones right off the bat is to lower the exposure. So I have my exposure set to like a third of a stop under just because I like to keep some of that highlight just because I find that iPhones and most cameras in general tend to overexpose whenever it's using auto exposure. So I tend to underexpose by, by a third of a stop and I find that I get better looking photos and video. So it's the same setting for both photo and video. And my other tip for you guys is to just shoot in raw. Shooting in RAW is, I think, my ultimate tip. I know people like the way that photos look right from their phone, but if you want to have the most flexibility and the most fun, I would say, as a photographer, if you're wanting to shoot photos and edit them on your phone, is to shoot in RAW. As far as editing, everything is done in Lightroom Mobile. So my phone photos never go on my computer. They're always on my phone. So I find that it's easier to just edit right from my phone. I find that the, the Lightroom app is robust enough to where I find myself editing a lot of my personal stuff on there. So I, I'm able to edit from my custom presets that I've made over the years or different, different profiles that I've accumulated over the years. So it's really easy for me to edit on my phone. And I find that it makes editing a lot more fun and I'm able to try different editing styles. So everything's done right on my phone and I find that it's easier than just going on my computer. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you have any questions on the iPhone 15 Pro, or anything else, please leave in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you next time. Bye.